options at 30,000 feet. Hummus, sandwiches, even hot meals. But sky-high dining can be risky. About three quarters of the way through the flight, I start feeling really bad. Frequent flyer Jason Alderman says he got food poisoning after eating duck ravioli on a flight last year. It's the most intense sickness I've ever had. He says he reported his illness to the airline and filed a complaint with his local health department, and then nothing. It really felt like nobody was claiming responsibility. It feels like things like this can be allowed to continue to happen. The CDC says about 48 million Americans get food poisoning each year. But how many cases from airplane food? Experts say it's hard to track because passengers might not get sick right away and then scatter to different destinations. So just how safe is this food? NBC News looked through more than a thousand pages of FDA inspection reports for three major airline catering companies since 2012. We found food safety violations that might make your stomach turn. At LSG Sky Chefs, flies, rodents, dead roaches, dirty pans and utensils marked as clean, and liquid dripping from raw bacon onto cooked bacon. At Gate Gourmet, dusty fans blowing air onto uncovered food, dried food debris on cutting boards. Flying Food Group, a live bird inside one facility, and two instances of listeria. The public's at risk. Food safety expert Roy Costa is a former government food inspector with 40 years of experience. How can these types of violations make people sick? By either allowing the bacteria to grow or by allowing the bacteria to get on the food and then survive to the customer. Another concern, how the food gets delivered. It was about nine flights a day that you were putting food onto the airplanes? Yeah. Prince, who asked us not to use his last name, is a former truck loader for LSG Sky Chefs. The workers' union, now in contract negotiations, brought him to New York to speak with us. We load the food in the truck. There's no AC. Outside it's very hot. We close the truck, so no idea if the food was safe. He says once the food left the facility, it was only cooled by dry ice. Did you ever see the dry ice evaporate? Yeah, many times because Phoenix is very, it's very hot. You know, the dry ice is like, it's like a gas. If you leave it, it's very hot. Like in a couple of minutes, it can disappear. From the time the food is put on the truck to the time it gets put on the airplane. How much time has gone by? It was like two hours and a half or three hours to put a food in the plane. How do you think passengers would react knowing what you know? I can never eat anything in a plane. All three companies told NBC News they're committed to providing the highest food safety standards and comply with the latest federal regulations, undergoing internal and external audits, and said they've taken action anytime an issue is identified. Flying Food and Gate Gourmet adding they've made investments to improve and ensure food safety. The FDA requires inspections at least every three to five years and told us facilities are also often inspected by state and local authorities. But for frequent flyers like Jason, the takeaway before taking off? I'll grab something at the airport, I'll eat the pretzels, or I'll go hungry. Food safety experts say the number one food you should avoid Seafood. Also, deli meats, dairy, and anything served raw, like veggies, those foods are more prone to making you sick if they haven't been handled safely. So what can you eat? Anything that's been cooked is usually safe, or just stick to the prepackaged, factory-sealed snacks. Best thing, try to buy something before you board the airplane or bring food from home. We have a lot more about this on Today.com.